Hi everyone, welcome back to Ask Confluent. This is the first Ask Confluent of 2020, which is only slightly embarrassing. And we're going to answer questions from the internet. I'm your host, Gwen Shapira. I have with me today, Tim Berglund. I Hello. don't actually think you need introductions. Um, yeah, yeah. I had you on streaming audio and <laughs> I introduced you. So. so you are a senior director in charge of everything developer experience and our head evangelist. Is that the right? That would be more or less correct. Correct? Yeah. Fantastic. So yeah, basically his inofficial title is he's kind of famous. The only way I get to talk to him is either getting interviewed or interviewing him. Which is also how I feel about you. <laughs> so now it's my turn. Okay. Today we're going to really do a unique Ask Confluent, we're going to focus on a single topic. Uh, teams had a super popular What is Kafka video. I think it was like 20,000 views in five minutes kind of thing somehow. Yeah. Uh, and it generated... Even though it was longer than five minutes <laughs> itself, it still got those 20,000. It's like non-causal. Yeah. Yeah, nothing at all. Um, and uh, yeah, we got lots of questions about it, lots of comments. So we're just going to spend some time going over Let's everything. Let's talk about the Kafka. what is Apache Kafka lightboard video. Yeah, so before we do that, <laughs> there is a comment I cannot resist putting here. You're going to uh, do this. Dave, yes, of course. Dave Klein. Uh, My friend, Dave Klein. Oh, I didn't realize it. That explains everything. Yes. Dave Klein and I, we exchange Christmas cards. We're friends. Ah. Ah, okay. Yeah, I know. Just saw him randomly on Twitter. Looked mm -hmm. like a smart guy. So mm -hmm. you have good taste in he friends. He's a smart guy. And he said guests on streaming audio have been great, which I agree. Fair. And Gwen Shap is an excellent interviewer, which mm -hmm. I also, would have to agree. Also true. But just once, I'd really love to hear Tim Berglund interviewing Tim Berglund. And I saw that I was thinking, you know. What would Tim Berglund ask if he was to interview Tim Berglund? So, yeah. Um, well, I think I would say something like, well, Tim, we all know the moon is not made out of blue cheese. But if it were made of barbecue spare ribs, would you eat it then? <laughs> and Tim, I know I would. <laughs> And I think, I think, yes, I would. In fact, I'd go back for seconds and finish it off with a tall, cool Budweiser. <laughs> that is something I would never have guessed. Okay. And then you also had a video on how to write a successful conference abstract. Yes. Can I talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, at Kafka Summit Call for Papers time, there's tremendous community contributions, like all kinds, hundreds of people. Uh, so, you know, we get five times more submissions. We have slots. And just internally at Confluent among our coworkers, like people will want customers to get in there because that's always good, you know. And it is good because these are people building real things. It's, it's useful for the summit. And I get this request a lot. I get, hey, can you help with, the, can you look at this abstract? And like all of them are the same. All of them have exactly the same problems. And I write the same Slack message like 600 times and I die a little bit each time. So that's the context, but go on so with the So what the is the thing that you tell, say every time? You can't just leave us hanging. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't, I can't. And the question is, it kind of summarizes it. Um, and it's George, I think was asking a question. Yes. He was really, it wasn't really asking a question. Yeah, he was kind of no. summarizing. And I was just saying, I, it's more of a comment really. Yeah, it is more <laughs> of a comment than a question, but a good comment, George, good summary. So here's the thing, an abstract is a story, all right? And there's the, the classical three-act story structure, which is not new. Um, it's, I think, the oldest account of it is in the Poetics by Aristotle, around 2,500 years old. So this is not a new idea. Uh, this is just how stories are told. And what you do, the way a conference abstract should be, is at the beginning, you start with the attendee. You don't start with yourself. They always, they always And this is typically true of like a big customer or a big company, I mean. Uh, you know, we send... Um, a trillion messages a day, or we send more messages than there are fundamental particles in the universe every <laughs> femtosecond, and boy, are we cool. You know, don't. Nobody, nobody, literally nobody cares. And also, it's not differentiated. I, we're getting hundreds of abstracts. All of them are trillion messages per something. Uh-huh. We, like, there is no reason for us wow. to choose an abstract just because you're, you're doing cool. trillion. How about me? Can you help me? So the abstract starts with the attendee. Right, you say you have to identify with a problem that they have. They're scared about something, something hurts, something's broken in their life. You have to identify with that pain. Uh, say, I understand that, I get you, I'm like you. 
And then in the middle of the abstract, you kind of deliver on a little bit of technical content that, that summarizes what you're gonna say that fixes that problem. And then at the end, you come back to where they started and say, look, your life is better now, which isn't tell them what you're gonna tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. It's tell them that you identify with what's wrong with their life, here is the technical content that addresses that wrongness. And now here's how your life is better. One, two, three. That's the three. Yes. And there's absolutely no reason to do a recap when you have literally like two paragraphs. Right. Our memory is not as bad. It's not <laughs> as it that seems. bad. We are old, not that old. And so it focuses on the person in the audience or the person at the conference who might want to attend the talk. That's what you're not talking about how awesome you are ever. Nobody cares. That's what you have to get over. Uh, you have to show the person that you care about them. Yeah, and it's a big engineering problem in general. Like you want to say, hey, look at the cool thing I built. And you focused on the I built and not at mm -hmm. what's cool about the thing. Right. And you still get to do that, right? That's your exposition. That's that's 60, 70 percent of your talk is talking about the cool thing. But you frame it in terms of, of how it addresses somebody's problem. So that's that. Yes. I mean, go Google the abstract. Yes. Uh, how to write a and, successful oh, And obviously... Um, yeah, the watch notes. the video. Watch that video. Okay. And that takes us all the way back to the first Ask Confluent. I oh, picked wow. it specifically for nostalgia value. Yeah, do you I remember? Was there. I do. Yeah, yeah we did it we in your basement. In my basement <laughs> exactly. studio. Yes, I see the little uh, screenshot exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And Maulik Koshti said, I've been going through Confluent operator videos and notice that REST proxy is not in the list of components which can be configured and managed by Confluent operator. May I know the reason why REST proxy deployment and configuration is not made available using Confluent operator? So actually, to be honest, it's probably my fault. So I need to apologize. <laughs> I, was hoping, I was hoping you would answer this. <laughs> yes, I know exactly why. As you know, we basically ship operator to Confluent cloud first. That's how we run our cloud. And then we take the exact same operator and give it to customers. Uh, the thing is that we're not running REST proxy in the cloud. Uh, we're running uh, basically a slightly different component uh, that um, has APIs that match more what you'd see in cloud providers, I'd say, and also has the admin APIs, which is mm, the big deal. Which REST proxy does e not have. Yes, so okay. we're now hard at work at unifying them and creating a new improved REST proxy that we will run in the cloud, we'll uh, give it as open source, we'll be on-prem, and the operator will run because it will be in the cloud. Um, I'm just, um, yeah, sorry about refusing to run the current REST 100%. proxy in the cloud, but it's not very cloudy REST proxy. 100% Gwen's fault. But I was going to say that <laughs> that new and improved REST interface stuff that we've built for cloud sounds like, and hashtag safe harbor, this is not product roadmap announcement, but it sounds like the kind of thing one might productize at some point. It, so it's open source. You can go to the REST proxy. I mean, it's open source under Confluent Community License. Yeah, okay, so it's Confluent Community License, to be precise. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Free and source available. And it's yeah, as long as you're not uh, opening a competing software as a service, uh, which you shouldn't because you have no chance. <laughs> <laughs> um, as long as you're not doing that, it's open source. Uh, and the thing is that you can see our commits. So you can see us literally improving the REST proxy APIs to the point where we feel comfortable running it nice. ourselves. All right. Uh, Sharon Label said, I hope I'm getting the name right, great explanation. How does Kafka relate to Splunk, who used to aggregate logs? Splunk is, uh, I mean, I view that as as more of like an application, right? It's 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 still infrastructure, but it's way higher up the stack. I can't say I never used Splunk in my okay, life. Okay, okay, so yeah. I mean, Splunk started as, as a log aggregator and searcher of log things, and I, I know that the the product is much more complicated than that, and my actual friends I have working at Splunk, I apologize for doing such a bad job summarizing it. So there's a lot there to say. We're not going to be the best representatives of Splunk, but um, it is in no sense a competitor to Kafka. Kafka is a distributed log. It's yeah. data infrastructure with platform around it. Splunk is log aggregator and searcher and this purpose-built yeah. thing. So we does. see people use Kafka with Logstash and Filebits and Elastic mm -hmm. a lot. Like yes. this is probably our most popular use case. Yeah. Uh, do you say that the entire like stack, like Kafka plus Elastic is Splunk? Uh, yeah, I would, they are uh, 
probably substitutes. Okay. Um, and that would be like toolkit to build to build your yeah. own Splunk like things. So Kafka like is things. part of, and it's, it's common thing for Kafka. It's kind of part of a toolkit to build a thing. A thing. Yes. Yeah. But like if if you pay money to Splunk and use their their things and get value out of their features, uh, and 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 then option two behind door number two is Kafka. You got a bunch of engineering to do to build all that. Like Splunk's this yeah. product that could have a log in the middle of it somewhere, but then there's all this other application features and integrations and stuff. And on the other hand, Kafka has the central nervous system thing going on that you can actually build your own applications on Kafka, which yes. is not really a Splunk thing. Which so. is not a Splunk thing. Yeah, yeah. there's some, it's, I guess, slight like overlap. The, the, the foundation mm -hmm. for uh, we'll say an enterprise architecture uh, or you know a broader architecture Kafka is and Splunk is an application to do okay, a particular kind of thing let's move on with event data uh, Anne Nguyen uh, said I wonder how he could write in reverse so tell us Tim how did you learn to write in reverse referring to the, the lightboard video where I'm, I'm writing and uh, it's apparently in reverse well uh, the story is when I was in 10th grade I taught myself to write in reverse and I wrote notes to my girlfriend in reverse that she had to read with a mirror. You had a girlfriend in 10th grade. This I is did. adorable. This is this great story. And apparently that was pretty good game because this summer will be our 30th wedding anniversary. Everyone uh, learn how to write in reverse, guys. Works. This is the it most works. important skill That's, you can get. You, apparently this is a good skill. You this do is, popular Kafka videos and you get good stable marriage. I guess. I, I guess that's the <laughs> that's science right there. So yes. you can you can take that to the bank. I think correlation is causation, and you know maybe the divorce rates these days in America is because not enough people are writing in are reverse. writing in reverse. Yeah. So um, the other part of the story is that I actually don't write in reverse. There, that is movie magic. Uh, <laughs> it it the, the camera sees it in reverse, and then we flip it. And, and we even have special hoodies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you'll notice in that video, there is nothing printed on my shirt. And that's the default. If you like look at lightboard videos, there's probably no graphics on the clothing because then they would be reversed. We do have hoodies and t-shirts with our logo <laughs> printed in reverse. Now you know the magic. Yes. Um, but, I like the girlfriend those. story way better than. And it is true. Uh, yeah. Carrie read those notes in a mirror. I didn't do all of them that way. It was like, I think, you know, the cuteness wears it, it, off it, after about five. Yes, but yeah. this is adorable. Okay, David Connelly has an interesting question, also very direct. Mm -hmm. Whenever I see new web development technology appear, I ask myself, what problem is that solving that cannot already be solved using existing technology? And he has kind of an example, which is not really Kafka related, but basically he says, I watched the video, you didn't really give me use cases, uh, so I don't know what is the problem that Kafka is solving, even though I solved, I just saw uh, what is Apache Kafka video. Um, and I have to admit that you didn't have any use cases no, in the video. I didn't. And David, it was already, I think it weighed in at about 12 minutes, which is kind of long. So are you going to video. have a use case only video? I would be happy to make use case videos. I think, because I agree that use cases are not really part of what is Kafka. Uh -huh. But it is interesting. Yes. I wonder if Casey Kasem ever did a long distance dedication to anyone named David Connolly and if we could get audio of that because I would like to I would like to have that audio integrated and David do this as a dedication to you because it is a fair question. And the structure of the video, um, and it, it's funny how often we have this debate. Um, there's kind of two ways of learning a thing and two sets of interests. And one of them is what can I do with this? And when I talk to my coworkers who are like more involved in the sales organization, they are obsessed with use cases, right? It's gotta be used, if this is not retail, this retail customer will not believe that we can do anything. If it's not manufacturing, it has to be a manufacturing use case. And um, I find that uh, developers are more likely to be interested in the thing in itself. Step one is I know, what, I know that there is a thing called Kafka. Step two is I need a mental model of it. What is it, right? Um, and is it, you know, for any new technology, it could be a web framework, it could be a uh, interesting JSON parser, it could be a language, it could be data infrastructure. Okay, Kafka's data infrastructure, what, it's a log and there's connect and you know, so that sort of mental model, my goal with that video was to provide that mental model to a technical audience, not to take the use case approach. The use case approach is valid and important. It just wasn't what I was trying to do there. So what can you do with it um, I am leaving as an exercise for the student. And I understand that, that 
there's a percentage of my technical audience that will find that unsatisfactory. It's just the approach that I took with that and that's where we're going and use cases are also a good idea and we'll get there. Yeah, I think that just someone that occasionally builds a thing for fun, one of the things is always like, you know, I'm writing my to-do list manager in Rust mm -hmm. and, you know, I need to store my to-do somewhere. And the question of is Kafka a good place for me to store my to-dos uh, is a legit one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so not even like going to like solving you know, world problems, like we, you know, cure cancer and solve retail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we make retail profitable again. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, and there is all this really more engineering use cases, like is it good for me to, if I need to store something that needs random access, is it good? Right. If I have a lot of messages, what if I have very few messages, is Kafka still good? Those are all kind of legit engineering questions that totally. I hope we'll get a video. Yeah, no, we should get a video for those. And it's not, again, that, that doesn't fit in the mental model video in, t in the space of 12 minutes, but another yeah. one. Another one. We need action more videos. Item, action item taken, Mr. Connolly. <laughs> but you have to comment positively on that next one? Yes. I mean, especially if we do it, especially for Connolly. I mean, yeah, we have no, he has no choice. Pradeep Singh said, I liked the train diagram. Pradeep, <laughs> I like it too. Yes, it was awesome. Govinda Sakher said, or Sakahare. Sakahare. Sure. Sakahare said, great explanation by Gavin Belson. And this is another throwback. I think like a year ago, we answered someone who said, oh, we didn't know Gavin Besson joined Confluent. And we had an entire debate with Constantine uh -huh. on whether we would even let Gavin Benson join I, Co Confluent. Govinda, I feel like you have just called me Gavin Belson, and I don't know what it is that I did to you. <laughs> um, but, and in case anybody does not watch the HBO series Silicon Valley, uh, we're not paid endorsers of HBO or Silicon Valley. It's a really funny show. Okay, if you work in this particular little slice of land, um, it just, it's like you'll laugh and you'll cry. Yeah, I was just maybe thinking, at the same like, time. maybe too soon. <laughs> it's, so, it's so good. And Gavin is not exactly, we're going to say, a sympathetic character. In and that. you are. Is I would like to be that way. He, like, he's like, there are moments of sympathy you feel for him, but he's sort of a bad guy. And so thanks, Govinda. Don't know what I did to you. <laughs> Anyway, th at least you like, thought it was a good explanation. I appreciate that. Yes. I'm glad it was helpful to you. Great explanation. Exactly. That's a bit of a backhanded compliment, I guess. Um, if by backhanded, you mean straight punch to the nose. I mean, he, she did, he, did, he or she said great, great explanation. Great explanation. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Seriously. Uh, CDV <laughs> uh, said, just signed my first contract for job two days ago. Kafka is one of the tools I'm going to be using, and I have to say this video is absolutely brilliant for understanding the main concepts. Thank you. This is like the nicest thing I've ever it heard. Is, it really is. Uh, <laughs> so like when I think about uh, like personally what I get out of things like this, um, I know being a developer is scary because everything changes fast and you're always afraid of falling behind and like how do you learn the new stuff? And I just want to make it easy to learn the new stuff. Yeah. Especially because I think Kafka is very important new stuff that people need to know. But helped you get a job is even more awesome. That makes me very happy. I hope that job is going well. This comment is presumably a few weeks old. Yeah, hope you're crushing it. Yeah, and taking care of and maybe write in and love. let us know how is this job going and how is Kafka. Tweet me <laughs> at T L Berglund, T L B E R G L U N D. We'd love to feature a follow up. I want to hear about it. Yes, this is so exciting. Uh, I'm starting to kind of batch things together just because okay. uh, there is a lot. Normally we don't <laughs> yes. like batching here, but this will make an exception. It's micro batches. <laughs> Even worse. We Go are, on. We are micro batching. Okay. Uh, our, we we said we never would. Our producers are micro batching. If you try to send high throughput, the producer will actually That's, batch. Don't say, don't say micro batch. I know it batches on the network. Yeah, the network it's efficient. Does. No, it's very efficient. <laughs> you get you get higher throughput. Uh, yeah. the expense of latency, but... And this is what we're going to do now. Okay. <laughs> I'll stop. <laughs> we're going to get higher throughput. If uh, I Night up. Owl 358 Whose said... Whose YouTube avatar is the Autobot symbol. Shout out to you, my friend. I love it. Yes. He said, nice overview. Our company has just began implementing Kafka and I'm watching a lot of these little videos to wrap my head around it. And then an unknown user without a cool avatar said... This explanation really helped to wrap my head around the Kafka idea. So apparently you have people wrap, wrap their, their head heads around, around things. And you are so welcome because that's what I want to do. 
Yes, and it's nice to see that companies are just beginning to implement Kafka and we're helping along. Okay. Yes, now it's like just a lot of more thank yous. Olga Maria Malpisa Lobregat? Sure. Yes, <laughs> said, thank you, the explanation is great. Oh, stop. <laughs> No, Har- actually, don't stop. Harsh Sristava, no, they're not stopping. Harsh, yeah. Sri- Harsh Sristava said, very nice explanation, thanks a ton. Jens Scharnhorst Jens. said, Jens. perfect overview, great stuff. <clears throat> Thank, glad you liked it, Jens. Eddie Jowd said, great explanation, I love the light board. I, we love the light board. <laughs> I love the light board, too. Thank you for the light board. I'm saying to the men behind the camera. Yes. You're welcome. Akash Sengar said, great explanation, subscribed. So if you subscribed, you're watching this. Thank you back, That's Akash. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> subscribe, everybody. Yes. Down there right now. Unless and you're listening to the audio, in which case go to YouTube and subscribe there. In persona, great introduction. What's not to like? Looking at you, whoever clicked this like. <laughs> Apparently someone clicked this like. Now on to Teams building streaming microservices with Apache Kafka, which is another incredibly popular series, which we have to redo because the streams team keeps redoing their APIs, forcing us to redo our content every time. I'm now the in the middle of redoing the book. It's is improving the APIs, <laughs> and we are so grateful to them for doing that. The APIs and were fine. They're tinkering. <laughs> <laughs> it was great APIs. <laughs> this is the voice of stagnation, ladies and gentlemen. Do not listen to it. Um, no, it's, it's, go- it's good that we still have more things to do. And yeah, that is, I like that streaming microservices video. It's, it's, a, yes. it's popular. We, and we will, uh, since I have to redo my content, you may as well. Uh, yes, yours. there is no escaping it. Yes. And few There's more of those. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> SVDFXD. You think it's just like random on the keyboard? Or SVD it looks like FXD. those are nearby. It looks like a good gaming card. game. Yes. Anyway. I, we're awesome introduction video. Can't wait to start learning Kafka. Thank My you. friend, you already started learning Kafka by yes, watching that video. That's so. the thing. You mean you still can't wait to start writing code, which yes. is where it just really... Mm, yeah. Well, people who run Kafka also count. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Karsik Mail Ready, Mali Ready, said, awesome explanation of Kafka. Which Thank it you, is. The Diego SB said, now that's what I call an awesome explanation. Great job. <laughs> and uh, Cyprus Avalontis said, in a word, awesome. 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 It is. It just oh, is. Thank you. So, yeah, thank great you, Spiros. job. Really great job. There is something to be said about those short videos that really get you through a concept. I haven't learned Kafka in ages, and when I did, I actually had to read a lot of documentation. The right. short video and was code, not there. You know, yeah. yeah, well, I kind of disagree with people who say that they have to read code to know what it's doing in the documentation. In fact, the docs, I've yeah. read some good there, part of the docs, and they are actually readable. Yeah, there are very yeah. few places where... If you need to read code, you're probably doing something that's slightly off mainstream. Either you found a bug or you, you have created one and you're doing something bad. And it's all cool. I mean, that's it's open source. Yeah. It's fine to read the code. It's just but that I'm kind of sad that back then I didn't have like a 12 minute video that I could just watch. I know. <laughs> these kids these days, they have it so much easier. Yes, I had to kind of read code uphill both ways. <laughs> <laughs> Through the snow. <laughs> Six years ago, you know, when she was young. Okay, I think we're good here. That's a good way to finish things off. Uh, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Thank you again for just making all this great content, Tim. It's been just really, it's great to see this feedback. It's great to watch. I mean, I know Kafka and I'm really enjoying every bit of it. Good. Thanks and for having me on your show. Yeah, and great. thank you to the community for the great questions and all the positive feedbacks and the stories of how you found your first job or how your company is adopting Kafka. We really, really love it. Please keep those comments coming, even the ones that are in your face. We still love those yes. and we love being challenged. So thank you. Keep it going. Thank you.